Get ready, Helena Hustle is now live. Here, we will showcase successful leaders in business, athletics, healthcare, and all things that make Helena a great place to live. Join Dr. Daniel Bridge, owner of Endurance Chiropractic, as he searches out amazing individuals who are making a tremendous difference in this place we call home. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired with the Helena Hustle podcast. Jessica, thank you so much for, for joining me on Helena Hustle. Uh, Jessica Freeman teaches the small business class at Capital High School. And what else do you teach? I teach marketing management, uh, marketing education, and sports and entertainment marketing. Okay, fantastic. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm sure your, your students have a ton of fun. Um, we're going to dive into all of that. But before we do, uh, do you have your two truths and a lie ready? Yeah, I had to really kind of think about okay. that. That, was the, that that tested me a little bit. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at this, so we'll see. Okay. Okay. So the first one is that um, I was the mascot in high school. Okay. The second is I've been to Australia. And the third is I've never caught a fish. Okay. Uh, mascot has got to be true. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that you have never been to Australia. That is incorrect. Dang. <laughs> You've never caught a fish? Um, I have caught a fish, but it was just this summer. Like oh, okay. I hadn't <laughs> caught a fish my entire life until this summer. Uh-huh. And my kids were so proud of me. I caught a bass that was like this nice. big at Spring Meadow. Okay. <laughs> So you were not the mascot. I was the mascot. So what was the lie then? The, the, the fish. Oh. I've ne- I have, I've caught a fish before. You have caught a fish. Yeah, that one little tiny one. Oh, right, right, right. One little tiny you one. You were the mascot. Oh, you'd been to, right, right. Yeah, I've been to Australia. Uh-huh. And had you fished a lot? Yeah, I've lived in Montana my whole life. You've fished your whole life. And not for the, never- like, <laughs> lack of trying. Mm-hmm. I just was terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's. You can't always guarantee that you're going to catch a fish. So that's funny. Um, what were you doing in Australia? Um, I was actually, as part of um, the mascot, we got to go down to Australia uh, with the cheer team and cheer on football Okay. In, in Australia. It was when I was in high school. So were you? did you go to Capitol? I went to Helena High. Okay. So Battle of the Crosstown Teams. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> and was that pretty fun being a mascot? It was. It's, just, it's an experience, I think, that... that you know, you just get to be silly and mm-hmm. nobody knows it's really you. It was, it was, they did a good job of keeping a secret. No, people <laughs> know it really was you, but you uh-huh. did, you know, you were behind a, yeah. a costume. So yeah. it was a little bit of anonymity, a That's little bit. Uh huh. And how long did you do that for? I was the mascot for one, one year at high school. And then I actually did it for a summer for the Helena Brewers oh, okay. when they were still here. Uh huh. Was there a tryout process for that? There was actually. There was a couple uh, of us that tried out. And did you have to know the cheers too? Yes, you had to know all the cheers and all the dances. Had you cheered? No, I had been in dance though. Okay. But that was kind of my first Uh jump into cheerleading. Uh, That's awesome. And then then you went to Australia to cheer on not this football team. No, it was a Montana team. So it was kids from all over Montana that went down to Australia and played other teams from around the country and they played American football and you had to be very specific that it was American football. Yeah, right. Aussie rules. Um, and, uh, was that, was that a ton of fun? It was, it was so fun that the most funny part about it was getting a a mascot costume through customs. (laughs) You got a lot of questions. (laughs) That that's funny. Yeah. And did you have downtime when you were there? We did. We got to do, you know, the touristy things, go through Mm -hmm. Sydney and the Harbor and Mm. go to the beaches and, and take in some of those things. So mm. it was it was pretty fun. That would be fun. I've never been. Uh, would love to go someday. But yeah. Um, okay. And so then you you did you obviously grew up in Helena. Yep. And born did and you? What's that? Born, born and raised. raised. Did you uh, always anticipate that you were gonna gonna live here and work here? You know, I left for college thinking, you know, most of the kids here, they, you know, Helena, there's nothing to do here. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to get out. Um, so I was definitely in that in that boat that I wanted to get out and try something new and um, left for college. But somehow Helena has a way of bringing you mm-hmm. back. And my family lives here. So yeah. that's, you know, inevitably that's where why I ended up back here is because my family was here and that's mm-hmm. where I wanted to be. Where did you go to college? My first year of college, I went to school in Minnesota and mm-hmm. then decided Minnesota is too cold and too far away. <laughs> and so I got my degree from Montana State Billings. Okay. 
And uh, your degree is in what? I have a degree in business administration. Okay. With my emphasis is in marketing. Okay. Did you have to go, um, how did you become a teacher, like certification wise? So I did not take the traditional process to becoming a teacher. Um, I had worked in, you know, government, private, private industry um, and decided I wanted to become a teacher. I'd always wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, when I graduated from college, it just wasn't in the cards. The economy wasn't great. Mm -hmm. Um, They weren't hiring teachers at that time. It was just not a great time. Um, And so, and I really just wanted to be done with college. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) I said, you know what, I can maybe someday be a teacher. I just don't know when, or Mm -hmm. if that, you know, is in the cards. And um, so I decided to become a teacher. This is my fourth year teaching. So fairly, you know, late in the process. Um, but I got a provisional license, which allows you to teach the subjects that you have a degree in. So Mm. I was teaching full time and then going to school as well at the same time to get my teaching credentials. And Mm. I did that through, um, UM Western. Oh, okay. And now that you've got four years in, um, is it, uh, similar to how you pictured it would be being a teacher? You know, I think you're never prepared for change and Mm -hmm. you you know, you think, oh gosh, being a teacher. And I think it's different depending on what subjects you teach, you know, um, in business changes so much Mm -hmm. that you, you just, when I think I have it figured (laughs) out, it doesn't, it's not figured out anymore there, you know, when I went to college, social media marketing wasn't a thing Uh and now that's everything. And so you're trying to keep up with all of the newest trends and the TikTok videos and the cap cuts and all of these things that, you know, I I think the kids can teach me things because I don't know everything. Yeah. What do you do to, in order to keep up with, with the the changing landscape of business so that you're getting the kids prepared? I think the kids are a great source, Mm -hmm. you know, um, your kids or the students? Both, uh-huh. you know, yeah, my, you know, if you have kids, they, they're, they're on top of the trends faster right. than we are. Yeah. You realize you're old when, <laughs> when, when your kids are teaching you things. Right. Um, but I think, you know, just networking with other business teachers is always helpful, mm-hmm. you know, because we share the knowledge that we have. Um, you know, I'm a DECA advisor too. So we get a network with the other business teachers from across the state. So DECA is a great way to to keep up on what's going on and what's applicable. We have an advisory board too that we work with at the school that, you know, to make sure that the students are getting applicable education and what they're going to be needing when they leave the Mm -hmm. halls of the high schools. Um, So it's nice to have the business community telling us what our students need. And so Mm -hmm. we can keep up with some of those things. And a lot of it's just self-taught. Like I have to be on TikTok to know what's going on. I I have to be on Instagram to know what's going on Mm -hmm. um, and Facebook. So keeping up with the social media and, and keeping involved with it, even if it's not something that normally right. you would want to do, but it, you just have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look at it differently once you're on the other side of it. Um, what's your most popular class? You know, I I think they're all pretty popular, mm-hmm. it, just depending on what the students want to do. Um, I think I have a lot of buy-in with my sports and entertainment mm-hmm. marketing class, because if you have sports and entertainment in the title, I think that that... <laughs> How can you pass that <laughs> That up? wins every yeah. time. So I think the kids really enjoy... Uh, being able to freely talk about sports and entertainment and music and culture and, you know, that's all acceptable in my class. Mm-hmm. Um, now you teach two small business classes. Yes. And then just one sports and entertainment. Yeah, just one section. Of so that. that fills up pretty quick. It does. It's a pretty popular class. Is it nine through 12 allowed? Uh, typically with the small business management and those are upperclassmen. So 10, mm-hmm. 11, 12 take those mm-hmm. classes. Okay. Um, yeah, so Jessica invited me to come uh, just talk to her class about my business a little bit, and I had a lot of fun. I was, I really enjoyed it. Like, I loved the engagement that the students had and their questions. I know they had prepared them ahead of time, but they had a lot of good questions. Some questions that I hadn't heard um, and hadn't considered, uh, I think somebody was talking to me about failure. What was, you know, maybe my biggest failures, and I think that's something that doesn't get talked about enough because somebody starts a business and they think it's just going to be uh, win after win after win and they don't realize that you get kicked in the gut quite a bit. Um, do you guys talk about that with your students much, the, the topic of failure? I think, you know, in my own experiences, because I, I, I've obviously had my own failures and I'm open with that about my mm-hmm. students, like, you know, 
it isn't always roses in the right. business world. And, mm -hmm. you know, I make them research, you know, successful business owners and successful entrepreneurs that and see their story that, you know, they gave 500 pitches before they got somebody to bite. Right. And that failure is truly part of the process. Mm -hmm. And it may not be failure in, in the meaning that your business closed, but right. failure in, oh, shoot, I didn't get enough customers or, mm -hmm. oh, shoot, I bought the wrong piece of equipment yeah. or, shoot, you know what, I didn't get pick up on social media quick enough. Mm -hmm. But I think as part of the business process, that's learning as well. Yeah. What what do you do differently? What do you change? What do you what do you do to improve? Mm -hmm. And failure is absolutely one hundred percent part of that process. Mm -hmm. In not just in business and life. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have a strong stomach, you know. You you gotta you got to be used to rejection in, in whatever the form it is. Maybe you don't get the lease space that you're looking for. Or maybe, you know, you have a promising client and it turns out it doesn't work out. And uh, knowing ahead of time, that's helpful. So, you know, when I was going to become a chiropractor, I had every opportunity to really know what it was about. My dad's been a chiropractor for 30 plus years. Um, I kind of thought I knew what it was going to be about and I didn't. And I'm very lucky because I love what I do. I love being a chiropractor and I love the business aspect. That's one thing for chiropractors that a lot of people don't realize is you can be the best chiropractor in the world, but if you don't know how to run a business and how to treat your staff and how to provide good customer service, your business is not going to last. And um, I love the business aspect, but for someone who just loves taking care of people, but they don't know how to run a business, it's going to be really challenging for them. So that's something that I wish I would have maybe done a little bit more is shadowed chiropractors, not just see the patient interaction, but what does it look like behind the scenes when you're running a meeting or you're sending out a statement or you're handling a tough conversation, that sort of thing. Those are all such important parts of a business, you know, and when I teach my students in that, in that small business management class is that you can, you can be successful in the art or the skill that you have, but if you don't have those other skills, you have to find people that do and surround yourself with those people mm -hmm. because you can sink a business quickly if you don't know how to do the accounting, if you don't know how to do the human resources, if you don't know how to do the social media. So it's very important if you don't know how to do it to surround yourself with somebody that does. Right. And I, and I always tell my students too, as part of failure, it's, it's not no forever, it's just no right now. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times you look back and it was the best thing that ever happened to you. <clears throat> Out of your students, what, uh, what percentage would you say uh, are interested in going on and becoming an entrepreneur or starting their own business? I would say quite a few of them. They take the class knowing that, you know, maybe someday I want to own my own business. And so I think there's already that kind of entrepreneurial hustle in some of them. And I do have some students that already do have their own businesses, which, oh, really? is, which is insanely cool yeah. to have a high schooler that has a business and, and it already has that, you know, drive to have their own business. And so I think that's kind of unique and mm -hmm. it's, it's so great to see as a teacher that these, these kids have that. Um, but I always tell my students that you may not think you want to own your own business, but sometimes it just happens. Yeah. It falls in your lap. You mm -hmm. know, you work at a business and somebody's retiring and says, Hey, you want to buy the business? And you never thought in a million years that you would own your own business. So right. sometimes it's just chance. Mm -hmm. And so it's always good information to have. And it's, it's not just business skills, it's life skills yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what kind of businesses do your students own? I have had some students have like some clothing businesses really? that they do like, you know, they'll buy and resell. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, shoes are really popular right now. So there's okay. a lot of shoe things going sneaker on. Sneakerheads. Uh -huh. Yeah, those sneakerheads. Um, I have some a, a gal that does some stuff with horses. Okay. Um, I've had some students that have done um, like summer businesses with like mm -hmm. snow cones and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's it's cool to see that that hustle. Yeah. You know, you best case scenario is you have a successful business and you're in high school and maybe it continues past high school or it provides you income while you're in high school. But then worst case scenario is maybe the business doesn't thrive, but you've just learned a ton. Um, I'm going to totally botch this story, but you know, five guys, burgers and fries. Yep. Do you know the story behind it? A little bit. I had, I had a student, they did a project on okay. five guys last year. Okay. So correct me, but, uh, the dad was dying or died and he left his money to his five sons. And for whatever reason, they either decided to or they kind of had to go into business together. Is that right? That's my understanding of uh -huh. it too, yep. Yeah, and then here they have this thriving business that is all over the place. 
and um, kind of one of the examples of like, they weren't like, oh, it's my lifelong dream to start a burger place. Or maybe one of the brothers was, but they kind of had this opportunity and they took it and uh, they succeeded. So I, I, I love hearing stories like that. And, you know, something that you reminded me about people here and know a lot, the help that book. Are you familiar with yeah, that book? Yeah, they, they made the movie out of yeah. it. Yeah. Same thing. Like, I can't remember the number, but it was something really crazy. Like she had been to... I think it was at least 30 or more publishers and submitted the manuscript and everybody just said, no, 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 no. And I don't know what actually happened to finally get the yes, but um, that changes somebody's life if they are persistent with it. Stephen King had that same issue. Did he really? He was rejected by multiple publishers mm. before he was picked up, and now he's one of the most successful yeah. authors. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, books in particular, you hear about that. There's a book called The Power of One. It's a South African author. And he had written this book and he had the manuscript about this big. And that was it. And he used it kind of as a doorstop. He, I don't think he submitted it. And I think it was his wife finally read it and was like, this is amazing. You have to get this published. And same thing, it went on to become a, a very successful book. So I, I don't know. There's definitely lessons in there and persistence and then believing in yourself. You know, you say, oh, maybe this book's not that good. Maybe people don't want to read it. And different people are going to find like it's the best book ever, you know. There's also like the accidental entrepreneur mm -hmm. who just like, you know, with that, well, he didn't think he was going to be an author, yeah. you know, but it, it just happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would love to, I'd love to know more about what it looks like for your students to run the school businesses. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so as part of the classes, we have like hands-on learning lab is essentially what I call it. And we run um, school-based enterprises. So mm -hmm. we have our own school business. And at Capitol High, it's the bare necessity. So if anybody's gone to Capitol High, it's been around for, for decades. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's still thriving. Yeah, good. Um, and they just, they run it. They come up with the ideas of, you know, what are we going to serve in the school store? They do the marketing, the promotion, you know, they get hands-on experience with customer service and cash handling they do the shopping the ordering you know they the inventory management hmm. so they're in charge of it they all they handle all of that they handle all of it i mean i'm there to help yeah. them and guide them but it really it's their show is it just you or are there other teachers involved as well um it's primarily me and mm -hmm. and also deca helps mm -hmm. with it so we have the other deca advisor that that assists with some of that so i'm from shelby very small school we didn't have a school store that I can remember. What's a school store look like? I think it, it's different um, at every school. Uh -huh. You know, um, a lot of the high schools around Montana have school stores. So just kind of depending on their space and what's mm -hmm. available. But um, most of them offer food of some sort. Oh, so cool. food and drink and, mm -hmm. and different things like that. Um, some stores uh, offer like fan gear and pens and pencils and things that students might need mm -hmm. we don't we don't have the space for that uh, eventually we would like to have our own you know apparel hmm. and sell capital high stuff but because you guys make shirts right we have all the stuff to make yeah. shirts yeah uh -huh. yeah i was impressed with all the printing pieces that you had in the in the classroom for that yeah it's it's awesome to be able to give the students that hands-on experience it's mm -hmm. very practical um, especially if they want to own their own business. These are things that they have to know how to do. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the markup cost you yeah. know, or what is your cost of goods sold? Because mm -hmm. that's going to help you determine, you know, what do we sell our stuff for and what are, what are the students willing to pay? Mm -hmm. I mean, who's your target market? Right. Who are you selling to? Like, mm -hmm. what are they willing to pay at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. And that's great for them to have to understand that. Yeah. When you're teaching this or any other principles in your, in your classes, is there ever anything that you teach and like all of a sudden you can just see the light bulb moment in the kids? I think when, when you sit there and you talk about, you know, like the very fundamentals of a marketing, like everybody is not your target market. Right. Well, why not? Mm -hmm. Well, think about more. it. Yeah, to... everybody. I want uh -huh. everybody to love me. And I joked with them a couple of weeks ago. I was like, you're not pizza. Not everybody likes you. <laughs> um, so I think once they kind of figure that out in the, ter in the terms of the marketing world, like, uh -huh. Not everybody is your customer, so right. you really have to figure yeah. that out. Yeah, and it's 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 a funny principle because it's not saying, oh, I won't serve this particular person, I'll serve everybody, but this is who I'm going to message to because this is my ideal client. Yeah, you have to be effective in marketing. It's it's essential to know who you are marketing to. Right. Um, and then what about like misconceptions about your class or? 
this type of class in general? I know you mentioned a lot of people thought maybe they didn't have the opportunity to take it. I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, at the high schools here, at least in Helena and even across the state Mm -hmm. that we do have uh, classes that are career technical based and business is part of that. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people go, Oh, I wish I would have had that high class in high school. And it's like, you probably did. Mm -hmm. And you just didn't know about it. Sure. And I think whether you want to go into business or not, these are skills and information that you are going to use even after you leave the halls of the high school. Mm -hmm. It's very applicable because everything is a business, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, everything's a business. Mm -hmm. And so you can use that whether you decide to work for the state of Montana or if you decide to own your own business or you decide to be a flight attendant, you're going to use some of those skills. Yeah. I just had a little freak out moment and I, you know, I was going to say that in six years, you'll probably see my son, he's 10. And then that freaked me out thinking about having a 16 year old, but, but yeah, it's definitely a class I'd love my kids to take. It's, it's not only fun and and kids always ask, you know, what am I going to take away from this class? And will I ever use this information Mm -hmm. again? Mm -hmm. And I always tell them absolutely 100%, you will use something in my class that you learn again in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay. Any last shout outs or thoughts, uh, for about your class or maybe for somebody thinking about taking your class? I think that no matter what, what you do in life, like I said, everything's a business and also you yourself are a business. You're marketing yourself. Absolutely. Um, whether you want to go on to college, whether you want to be an athlete and, you know, marketing yourself Mm -hmm. to potential colleges, you want to date, you want to date. Yeah. (laughs) Dating profiles. That's 100% (laughs) marketing. Um, you are going to do it and Mm -hmm. you're going to use it and it's fun. It's interactive. And, and like I said, you will use this information. These are life skills. They're not just something that we want to teach you because we think that we need to fill your class schedules. It's absolutely fun. And then there's also the opportunities to be in some of the extra clubs Mm -hmm. um, that are involved with business. And Mm. that's, you know, we, I'm the deck advisor. So um, for those people, that's distributive education clubs of America, which it isn't called distributive education anymore, but that's the old term for it. Uh Again, it's career and technical education now, but we are a business-based club and that also gives the students hands-on experience. We plan Night to Shine, which is the annual teen talent show that is put on by the both local high schools, Helena and Capitol High. And that gives the students hands-on experience in running, planning, implementing an event and fundraising and networking and sponsorships and all of those things that get wow. involved with, you know, running an event. Mm. And, and that helps us fund our state and national travel, which is a great experience for students as well as mm-hmm. to be able to, to do that. Yeah. Sounds invaluable. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did it in high school. Okay. And so... I mean, I have a different perspective than some people, but I think it's it's definitely an opportunity for students to mm-hmm. not only just learn something, but network. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially those people that maybe are a little more shy. Mm-hmm. It's a great way to to network and try, you know, pitch a business. If yeah. it fails, it was in front of a judge. Yeah, and you've got a safety net of your friends and stuff. It's not just you on your own when you have to do it. You might as well get that experience when in a, in a super safe environment. Absolutely. And it, and some of these kids come up with some great ideas mm-hmm. and it's like, you could really run with that. Yeah. Like you absolutely could try that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Good. Well, hey, Jessica, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your knowledge and experience with your class. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Helena Hustle podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Helena Hustle Podcast.